All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to give you the beginner's guide to backlinks. I'm just going to go over the basics of what backlinks are, what you need to know about them, and then how to acquire them for your website so that you can actually help your website rank on Google. So firstly, there are a few different types of backlinks that you need to be aware of, and these all have their own pros and cons. So this list is the basics of what's currently being used as backlinks for websites. Now we've got guest posting, which is you posting a post on somebody else's website. And then obviously in that post, you would include a link back to your website. And that's how you get a backlink for that. So the benefit of these is they're considered a quite natural way of building links. And also people tend to be open to that. If you can write a good article that's on topic and relevant for their website and relevant for your website, people tend to be open to guest posting generally. So you can relatively easily get links to your site in this manner. Then next we have niche edits. Now niche edits are pieces of content on websites that already exist. And basically you try and get the website owner to edit that piece of content and insert a link somewhere in there to your website. So let's say for instance, you've got a plumbing business and you found a website that talks about something related to plumbing and you want to get a link to that. You would ask them to include a link to your website in one of their posts and that would be a niche edit. Now the third one is press releases. So basically what press releases are, are there a bunch of news websites across the internet ranging from like the big ones you've heard of like Herald's or Forbes and things like that and a lot of smaller ones as well. And so what press releases is basically an article that just summarizes something to do with your business like you know we've just opened up or all the whatever the case may be and then you give it to a distributor and they'll distribute it across a whole bunch of these usually a couple of hundred of them so that you get a bunch of links so these ones you won't get as high of a impact from them but you'll get a bunch of links and they do tend to help and it will help spread your brand name and your website across the internet which typically helps just being around generally now the fourth one is citations and directories these ones are very very well known in the local SEO space. However, these can definitely be used for other types of websites as well. And basically what they are, are things like Yelp.com or these other websites that just list businesses and it's just got a listing of the business. It's got the name, the address, the phone number and a link to the website. So that's what a citation or a directory is. They're largely the same thing. And so there's literally hundreds of these websites across the internet. Some are free, some are paid, but you can make listings on them and then link to your website in the profile and and that helps to get a backlink as well. Now, social media profiles are another one. So obviously you've got the ones Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. And then you've got a whole bunch of other ones, you know, Quora, Pinterest, basically anywhere you can make a profile, you can make one for the business. And then usually you can include a website link as well. And so these actually help as well. And they're considered a type of backlink. Now, the next one is called Haro. This one was quite popular in the SEO space for a while, but it's kind of dying down and I'll explain why. But basically Haro is help a reporter out. And what this was is, you can sign up to a newsletter and basically every day you'll get an email with a bunch of topics that reporters need an answer to or some information on on that topic and you know you can respond if you're an expert in that field and if the reporter decides to quote you they will include a link to your website in that quote wherever they release it and so that was a good way to get a lot of high quality links on some pretty decent websites however the issue you have with it is that a lot of people have automated this now and basically every seo was trying to do this and so it's extremely competitive you might have to respond to hundreds of requests before you actually get a link. So it's very time consuming and it's getting to the point where it's probably not worth it for most people, but it is an option. So you should be aware of it. And the last one are PBNs. Now PBNs are private blog networks. And basically what this is, is let's just say fake websites. So people have put together, you know, fake blogs that all interconnect with each other and link to each other and create a network. And so these can drive a lot of power because some of these sites can be very authoritative, have a lot of power behind them. But the problem is they're risky and Google doesn't like these and so if you get a link from a pbn while they can do good it's risky and it could get you penalized or make your website drop if google discovers what's going on so you need to be careful with them so that's an overview of the different types of backlinks that are available now primarily now there's a couple of basics when it comes to backlinking so the first one that you need to be aware of is that not all backlinks are actually good and some can cause you serious damage if you get a backlink from the wrong type of website google will penalize you and you will go down in the rankings and sometimes it can be impossible to recover. Usually it's recoverable, but it's very difficult a lot of the times. It, you can get manual action penalties from Google itself as a result of bad links. So you need to be aware of that. You need to be very careful what you're doing when it comes to backlinks and what website you're getting links on because it can do way more
more harm than good. Now, the next thing is you want the links to look natural. So the whole thing with the backlinking is that it's been extremely abused over the years by people doing SEO. And so Google is very sensitive to what kind of backlinks from where link to who with what words like the anchor text on the link and so on. So you need to make your links look as natural as possible so that you minimize the risk of having any issues. So links are a natural thing to occur on the internet. People will link from one website to another website. However, when you try and let's say manipulate it or force it in the case of building backlinks, you don't want to make it obvious that you're doing this. You want to make it look as natural as possible so that it's a more natural way and then it's less likely for you to have problems. Now, this goes back to one of the first points that I made, but you don't want to get links from sites that Google doesn't like. And that also is starting to include sites that are completely irrelevant to you. So Google is starting to put a lot of emphasis now on relevant websites linking to other relevant websites. So if you're getting links from random websites that have absolutely nothing to do with you, that can be okay if it's a very high authority website. Like let's say you get a link from Forbes or something like that. Yeah, that is going to help you. But ultimately you want to try and keep it within your niche and from sites that are actually relevant to your specific website. Now, this is a very important one. You don't want to constantly get links with the exact match keyword in the link or otherwise known as the anchor text every time. So let's say you're a plumber in Sydney. You don't want to build 150 links that all say plumber Sydney and link to the same page. That is an extremely unnatural link profile and that's probably going to get you penalized. So you need to be very careful with what words you're actually getting on the link from the other site to link to your site so that you don't have this problem. And the other thing is you want a good amount of links spread across your website as well. Most going to the homepage because if you look at the natural profile of when a website gets links naturally, a huge chunk of them, usually around 90% are going to be going to the homepage. So if you have a website that all of a sudden has 90% of the links going to a specific commercial page, Google's going to know that that's not natural and you're going to have problems. So basically, you want to make it look as natural as possible. You don't want to hammer only one page on your site with all your links and the exact match anchors like the example I just gave here of Plumber Sydney all linking to like the Sydney Plumbers page 150 times. That is going to create a problem. The last thing is how do you actually acquire these links? Ultimately to acquire backlinks, you're going to have to pay money for them. Now there are free ways to do it primarily with citations and social profiles. You can create those for free in most cases though some citations are paid but nothing prevents you from going on the you know hundreds of citation profiles hundreds of citation websites that allow you to make profiles for free and making them and the same thing with the social profiles as well you don't have to pay for a facebook account you don't have to pay for a twitter etc so you can make those for free the next option you have is manual outreach which usually requires you either paying the person that you're outreaching to or writing a guest post on their website which sometimes you also still need to pay them for as well that's just the reality of the situation people don't really want to give out links for free so unless you give them some good reason to link to like you have a very good post on your website that attracts links or it's very good information they'll want to link to it you'll probably have to incentivize them with some sort of payment to get them to actually put that link on their website and the third way you can use is you can use a vendor to get you these links for you now this is going to be the most expensive way but it's the easiest way so there's a couple of vendors that i'm going to put some links to in the description below but for instance you've got authority builders you can get like link insertions guest posts so link insertions like niche you would pay them and they will go and get the link for you. Now, this is going to cost you anywhere from a dollar a link for a citation. From them, citations are about a dollar each. That will cost you about a dollar to up to $300 for quality link insertion. So if we go into one of these other options, so you can see here, let's say you want to get a citation. You can see here that it's going to cost you a dollar per citation. So this is pretty cheap. And when I'm building citations, I use this because I'm not going to go through hundred websites myself. I just pay these guys usually maybe 25 if it's a less competitive niche that we're working in, maybe 100 if it's a bit more competitive, but somewhere in that range is usually what I get for my sites. Otherwise, if you go to, let's say, guest posting, this is where you're going to start having to pay more money. You can obviously take a look around their website and see what it's going to cost, but it usually costs anywhere from $50 for PBN to like two or 300 bucks for a quality website. So you can see here, you can pick like the domain rating of the website you want and what word count, and you can see here it's going to cost 270 if we want a domain rating of 40 link where we're going to get the link on, on the website. And there's a couple of 
other vendors as well. For instance, Fat Joe, these guys also do the same thing. You can see here, you can get local citations, you can get quote expert quote links, you can get blogger outreach. So basically that's like niche edits or guest posts. You can get niche edits, a whole bunch of different types of links you can get from them. Again, the same thing. If we just click onto one of these, let's say a niche edit, it's probably going to cost somewhere from 80 bucks to 250 bucks, depending on the power of the website. And a third option is these guys as well, QGP. So I'm going to put a link to them as well. These guys are a little bit cheaper and they offer PBN options as well. But again, if you don't know what you're doing with PBNs, I'd be very, very careful about what you're actually getting. In my opinion, if you don't know what you're doing with backlinks, you're probably better off just not doing it and letting the website get them naturally rather than risking getting a penalty by getting the wrong type of link. But yeah, these guys are another option as well. If you want to play around with this, see what options they have. For instance, if you go into niche edits, again, you can see here the options they have. And you can see here, these guys are open with you that this is a PBN. So you can get a niche edit on a PBN, another PBN, or you can get them on real websites here. So it's up to you. Obviously the real websites are going to cost more. You can see the PBNs are about 50 bucks, 60 bucks. So they're cheaper, but they're riskier. So that's basically all you need to know for backlinks. This is obviously the very basic overview. There's a lot of, a lot of technical and specific information within this that you would need to know. However, this is an overview. So you know what you're up against when it comes to actually link building. This is the overview of what it would require to get links on your site. So hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, post them in the comment below and I will answer them. Otherwise I will be making more in-depth videos about backlinking in the future as well. So stay tuned for that. If you would like me to coach you on how to do SEO and Google ads for only $49 a month, go to learndominatemarketing.com. And if you'd like us to do the SEO or Google ads for your business, go to dominatemarketing.io, book a call with us there. Catch you on the next one.